welcome to a very special presentation of Inside the Mind, where today we'll be interviewing the late president, Richard Nixon. Now I bet I know what you're all thinking. Well, how could that be? Richard Nixon's been dead for 22 years. And that's true. But thanks to recent advances in black magic, we now have the ability to do what no one's been able to do before. Interview a dead person. Well, except for those people who interviewed that vampire. So now let's go to my twin sister, who will be helping us with the summoning process. We call forth your assistance, O Great One, so that we may learn about the afterlife. We summon the spirit of Richard Nixon! In order for the ritual to be complete, blood must be drawn. It's a long story, okay? So, Mr. Nixon, thanks for being here on the show today. And thank you for interrupting what was supposed to be my eternal rest. Now, if you don't mind me asking, what's with the whole... Oh, well, you see, when I died, they said I could have anything in the world, so I asked for the most beautiful face in all of time and existence, and they gave me this. Quite the improvement, don't you think? Um, yeah, sure. So, Mr. Nixon... Please, call me Mr. Richard Nixon. So, Mr. Nixon, I'm sure the audience is just dying, no offense, to know, what's heaven like? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you we were here to discuss me. So if we can, can we please keep the conversation on me? Oh, um, okay. Wh why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? Oh, what's there to know that you should already? I'm Richard Nixon, former president of the United States of America. I'm a former living legend, baby. A true American icon. Well, I wouldn't go that far. What do you mean? Well, as you should know, Mr. Nixon, you are quite the controversial figure. Oh, pfft. So what? I had my fair share of critics. Doesn't everybody in the public eye deal with that kind of thing? Um, let, let's just start over. Why don't we start with your early life? Well, uh, I was, uh, born in a farmhouse in 1913, and my family moved to White Year in uh, 1922. Had, uh, five brothers. Dad was a businessman, and Mom stayed at home. Basically, you were, uh, the old-fashioned American family, I'll tell you what. So, how did you take up the government? Oh, I joined the Navy in uh, 1942. Oh, really? Where did you serve? Oh, uh, the South Pacific in good old World War II. Wow, so how did you get into more governmental work? Well, uh, I was elected into Congress into uh, 1946, so I'd say there. But I really got my big break when Dwight picked me as his running mate. So, what was it like working with Mr. Eisenhower? Oh, it was great. We, we had a real relationship, you know, just, just a real genuine connection. And I think the American people can tell them that's why they gave us a second turn. Yes, you two were quite the couple. <laughs> anyway, so after that you had your famous run-in with Kennedy. Don't you bring that slack-jawed, Catholic, Bostonian brat into this. Mr. Nixon, you can't say that about Kennedy. And why the hell not? Well, after he passed, jokes like that just aren't funny. Uh, you know, it's bad enough I had to pick up America's pieces after his vice president drove it off a cliff, but now you're saying I can't even poke fun at the guy? God, just thinking about it's giving me a headache. How did losing affect you? Oh, it destroyed me, you know. I was ready to give up on politics as a whole, you know. But of course, come 1988, I had a change of heart. Which helps me segue into my next question. What was being president like? It's something most people can only dream of, and you got to live that dream. So, what was it like? It was stressful, you know. When I was president, America was going through a great time of change, and... With change comes problems, of course, and, you know, when you're president, people tend to 
blame their problems on you. It was as hard for me as it was for the citizens, because in the end of the day, I am an American citizen. So, you said you were president of law and order. What yes, because nothing, and I mean nothing, is more important than being lawful and orderly. Laws are put into place for a reason, I tell you. And you know what, that's what none of those damn hippies understood. It is every person's civil American duty to... What's with the luck? Well, Mr. Nixon, I hope you understand that it would be unprofessional of me not to bring up... Watergate. Uh, always with this Watergate nonsense, because any time someone wants to talk about Richard Nixon, you gotta bring up Watergate like it's the only thing ever. Well, you know what? I did other stuff besides Watergate, too. I created the EPA, but you never hear anybody talking about that, because they're too busy talking about Watergate. Well, I... Wait, really? Yeah. December 2nd, 1970. I remember it like it was yesterday. Oh, I didn't know that. Hey, you learn something new every day, but still the point remains. I think I should be known for a little bit more than just one blemish on an otherwise great career. What about all the other bugging? And the enemy list? And the Nixon tapes? What about them? I don't remember the last time an elected official sounded like an unedited episode of South Park. Let's just go to fan questions. So, Mr. Nixon, how does it feel to be impeached? Hey, 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 hey! I wasn't impeached. I resigned, okay? Resigned. There's a big difference, all right? Next question. Well, Mr. Nixon, how did you get into heaven? Because if I'm pretty sure that if you can, if you can do it, then anyone can. I'm gonna haunt you. I'm going to find you, and I'm going to haunt you for the rest of your miserable life. This is not a joke. Mr. Nixon, looking back on your presidency, has it left you with any thoughts? I always find it bizarre how when people talk about my presidency, they always talk about the second run and none of the first. They're more than happy to bring up Watergate, but they never bring up China or something like that. They always bring up the bad, but never the good. And I understand that I made mistakes. I genuinely wish that if I could, I would go back and do things differently, but I can't. So all I can do is accept that I am a flawed man who made mistakes. I was a flawed man who was running a country differently than the one I grew up in. And in the end, all I'm really asking is that I wish that when people look back at me, they look back and see both the good and the bad and make a decision that would be justified. In the end, all I really ask is that when people look back at Richard Nixon, they take in both the good, the bad, and the ugly, and they make a decision for themselves on what they think of me. I'm afraid we're all out of time, Mr. Nixon. But it was an honor having you on the show. Well, thank you. It was really nice being here, but I'm afraid I must go. For you see, there are others who need me. Nixon out! Peace! God, every other week I got some new jerk trying to summon me. It's either I gotta be on a talk show, or I gotta be helping Little Ricky with this dumb history fair project. Jesus, you think a guy could just get a little bit of time, and kick back, sit in heaven, and listen to Freddie Mercury? Come on to the air! With a friend of mine! Adventures everywhere! 
Your knee is in my spine. We're two unlikely friends. But take a closer look. I'm walking on air. And I am not a crook. You, you and, and I, I are, are meant, meant to be. What the hell was that?